video we're going to do a calibration on an 8000 series cart using the UT of the monitor. So the first thing we need to do is we need to set up the monitor so we can go ahead and do a calibration. There's a few things that we're going to want to do. One, we're going to have to set the products up in the tanks that we're going to be using. And then also we're going to check to make sure that we have a manual speed in those guys that are new to the cart. So from our main run screen of the UT, we'll just hit our wrench and screwdriver puts us into the settings menu and then we'll go into our tank settings and then down to our speed and we're just going to make sure that we have a manual speed set in there so the tank has a speed to calibrate at and usually you want to set that to what you usually see that so today we have it at five mile an hour to change it just touch on the five bring it out and you can enter in a different speed if you like then we'll hit OK, and we'll hit the wrench screwdriver again, and then we'll go down to our products list. Three bags, showing the different products depending on what you've already built into your products list, and if you've done it all prior to seating, you may have up to 16 different products in there. But you're going to have to tell it what products are in which tank. Today, we're going to calibrate tank number one, and we're going to calibrate floor drive. So I've already built the product, so I'm just going to touch on floor. Floor dry is the product name. Tank number beside it is what we want to tell it which tank we're putting that product into. So today we have that product in tank number one. Hit OK. Then below floor dry you have your density. So for every product we can figure out what our density is. Grab one of your white pails comes with the cart and your digital scale and weigh this pail right full and level this is 1.04 of a cubic foot so then we just have to get the weight take off that 0 0.04 and now we'll have pounds per cubic feet and we can go ahead and we can dump that into where it says density then beside there we have our preset rate one so we can enter in what we want to calibrate for Today we'll calibrate for 90 pounds. Then you'll have your preset rate 2. You can enter that in. Then you have your rate increments, the increase, decrease, how much it goes up or down when you hit that plus or minus symbol on the main screen. And then you have cal factor. Cal factor is how many revolutions or how much product comes out for each revolution of that metering auger. And if it's set to zero, it has nothing to spin to, so if you're building a new product, you're actually going to have to go in there and put a cal factor in there, depending on what metering auger you have for each tank. So we just touch on cal factor and go down to where it says cal factor. I've entered one in here, but if you're wondering what cal factor you should be putting in there, depending on the metering auger, is a low output, put 0.1, a double flight, 0.2, single flight, 0.3 and high output 0.4 and just touch on it you can enter those in that's just a starting factor that'll get the meters to spin we'll get our product weight for the first calibration and we'll have to go on and recalibrate which we will do in this video we'll just hit ok and then we'll go back to our product we've set up everything for floor dry so now all we have to do is go back to our products list from this, now we can go into calibration, and that's just this button here. Now our monitor is set into calibration. Now all we can do is, with the monitor set up, we can leave the tractor and go back to the back of the tank. Before we leave the tractor, we're going to want to turn on our fan 1 circuit that we use for our metering circuit. So coming back to the back of the cart, your fans will be running. You're going to want to turn them off. Done by this tab here. Flip it over so it says auger. And now we are sending all of our oil up to our auger or putting it through the metering circuit so we should be ready hydraulically. And then with each 8000 series card, you find your digital scale. With this digital scale, it has the capability of holding a tear weight. So turn the scale on if you want to program a tear weight into it once it shows a weight 
make one of your pails or whatever you're calibrating with on it, and then push and hold that on zero button for about 10 seconds. Once you put it for about 10 seconds, let go, it should show you zeros, and then also when you take that pail off, it should show you the weight of the pail that it's subtracting off of your weight. Then we're going to have to crawl under our tank, take our downspout out of the airstream and put it into the calibration spout. So we're dropping product into a pail and then find one of your pails and throw it under there so we can catch the sample. Then the next step is we're going to have to charge the augers. The augers don't have any product in it so we're going to, we don't want to have pulse revolutions on the monitor and put our cal factor out. So we'll charge the augers that we're calibrating. In this scenario, we're just calibrating tank number one. So we'll go ahead and we'll turn tank one on. It's sitting in standby. And then all we have to do is hit the play button. Once you get a consistent amount of product coming out, just hit stop on the play button. And then you'll notice in the monitor that it does have revolutions and an estimated weight, and we're gonna to have to zero that out. We don't have to run back to the tractor. We can do that from the side of the cart by hitting our prime zero button. Green light shows us that we've done it. Now looking at our monitor, we should be back to zeros. So then we'll want to take this pail out. We don't want to use that product that was for charging the augers. Put a fresh pail underneath. And then again, all we have to do is turn on the tanks that we want to calibrate or run product out of, so when tank one is on standby, all we have to do is press the play button. Hit play, wait for the product to start coming out. If you're doing a multi-tank calibration and one tank fills up faster than the other, just turn off the corresponding switch to that tank. We want to do about two-thirds of a pail. The larger the sample size, the more accurate your cal factor is going to be. So once we get a sample size, all we have to do is turn off that corresponding tank, or just touch the play button to shut the tank down. So we'll hit stop. We can grab and turn on our digital scale so it's ready for us. Hit our weight. Once we have all our weights for the product, now we can go in to the monitor, or back into the tractor, and enter our weights into the monitor. The weight is 13.6. So now we'll go up to the tractor cap. We're in calibration. There's nowhere to put our weight, so we have to hit next. On the next screen it says your estimated weight, and then your actual weight that you got from your calibration, or your sample size. We just touch on zeros in the weight that we got, 13.6. Once you have all your weights in that you calibrated for, then you can go ahead and hit next. And then on this screen, it shows you your old cal factor, your new cal factor, and the percent difference between the two. And because we used floor dry and we had a starting cal factor of 0.2, you'll notice that our cal factor is out. We know we didn't do anything wrong in our calibration process. So we're 53% out, but we'll want to save that new cal factor. All we have to do is touch where it says ignore. Now it says save. Now it'll put that new cal factor on that product. And then all we have to do is verify with another sample to make sure that that new cal factor is exactly what we want. We'll just hit the check mark. And now we'll want to run a second sample to verify that we have right cal factor. So we'll have to grab a fresh pail and put it underneath our calibration spout. We're ready to run another sample. But remember, when I left the tractor cab, I didn't put it into calibration, but with the 8000 series cart, you can actually put it into calibration from the side using the keypad. So we'll just push button A, let it go, it turns green, now it allows you to do a calibration in the rest of your process. So again, we don't need to charge the auger because we already know there's product in there. All we have to do is turn on the tanks that we want to calibrate for. So tank number one is 
stand by, all we have to do is press the play button. So most of the RPMs have changed because our gel factor was out from the original and we're just verifying the new gel factor. So once we get that two thirds of a fail again, we'll go ahead and shut it down. Grab our sample. Again, back in the tractor, we'll go ahead and press next, and then we'll touch on the actual weight. Okay, and then once you have all your weights in again, just press next, and it'll go and it'll tell you your old cal factor, your new cal factor, the percent difference between the two. And the percent difference this time is 3.5%, which is close enough. It'll adjust for that. But I would like to save that new cal factor. So again, we're just going to hit where it says ignore. Now that's saved onto that product. And if you want it, you can go verify that cal factor again if you want it. Or if you just hit the green check mark, good to go and then all we have to do is go back to our main tank screen now we're ready to go seating but we're going to have to go to the back of the cart clean up a few things change put our downspout back into the airstream that we want or we're going to solid seat a strip in the field about this wide put everything away and then the last thing we do before we leave the side of the cart is we're going to want to turn our fans back on 